So we're actually live on our Facebook page. It's a private group. It's only for firefighters and retirees, or IFF Local 244 members and retirees. So they're the only ones that can hear us. Um, and I'm going to, I am going to uh, put our pictures up now on there. Let me give me a second. All right. Nothing yet. Interrupted. Yeah. Sorry. It'll, it'll, it's just going to skip. We also have really crappy internet, so <laughs> our viewers are going to see oh, like no. probably still frames of us, but that's okay. They can hear the audio um, and such. It so. looks like we're doing the robot right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Let me just figure one thing out real quick, and then I'll. Um, that's the one. Wait. All right. Let me make this bigger. All right. I think we're good now. Okay. Um, so, Melanie, Representative Stansbury, thank you for joining us today. You're, uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come talk to us. Um, real quick for our members, I'm going to go through a little bit of um, house cleaning. Uh, that we have a, an announcement to make that's involving our election. Uh, election. We had a postponed election because of the 14-day sh shutdown. It is on January 13th now instead of December. Uh, that's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Union Hall. Two county stations and two city stations, 33 and 40 in the county, and 9 and 17 on the city. Uh, we also have three early voting dates, the 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Union Hall only. Uh, that'll be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then because of uh, COVID, we have an absentee form of voting. Uh, there's other way, other reasons to, to absentee vote, but the big one is if you are um, under quarantine because you were exposed or you're in quarantine because you have corona uh, COVID-19, um, you are able to absentee vote. So just reach out to me to facilitate how to, how to cast your vote um, under quarantine. So those are our announcements. Uh, now to our big guest. This is Representative uh, Melanie Stansberry. She is the uh, House of Representatives rep from 28th District, um, which affects both, all, both our, our membership, county and city. Um, and for me, I'm a map person, uh, Melanie, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up the map that's going to show, um, at least I'm going to try to. There it is. There it is. Uh, so you can't see that, but our members can. Uh, Melanie, it's a map of your district, and it kind of shows how it goes from Montgomery to, um, what is that, Manalish, and then from Morris to Wantabo, and then all the way over the Sandia Mountains uh, onto the other side. So it encompasses a large area, uh, and I guess you know one of my one of my big questions is, you know, how how do you how do you represent members from or your your constituency from all over that district, from the mountains all the way to city uh, city city people? Yeah, totally. Well, um, actually, I have to say that when you look at the map, um, what you see is that about half of the district is like the wilderness of the Sandias, right. and the only the only the only uh, things that live up there are the bears and the bobcats. So um, we actually don't have any homes that are in that part of our district. But you know, one of the reasons I love House District Eight Twenty Eight is that I really it really is like a cross cent cross section of Albuquerque, you know, like um, if I don't know if any of you all out there are hikers or outdoors people, I know a lot of people um, working with AFR are wildland firefighters, but our district goes right to the edge of the foothills. And so we've got everything from like the high desert neighborhood, a piece of the high desert neighborhood and Glenwood Hills and um, and like those neighborhoods on the east side of um, Tramway. And then we have neighborhoods down off of Wantabo, which is like all different kinds of housing. There's apartments, there's condos, there's um, people from all over the world. There's a lot of um, international businesses, a lot of small businesses. So I love it because it's just like a cross section of everything that Albuquerque is. Cool. Um, yeah, it is a pretty unique district. Um, one of the re big reasons we wanted to talk to you today, Melanie, I know we've been trying to talk for quite a bit, uh, quite a long time now, uh, and get this out mm -hmm. to our membership is, is a lot of our members wonder why we get us being 244 get involved in politics, why we endorse candidates for House of Representatives seats, Senate seats, County Commission seats, 
uh, city council seats, mayoral, gov gubernatorial, all the races that we get involved with, uh, we get a lot of why are we involved. So, you know, I like to use you as, as an example because uh, you actually helped us get some specific legislation that's, you know, near and dear to my heart um, and I think is really an, an important win for us. Um, so I would like to, to talk to you a little bit about that and maybe get your, uh, your take on how that kind of went through uh, the legislation, both the, the House and the Senate, and how we got uh, an, an amendment to House Bill uh, 324 and our post-traumatic stress attached to our presumptive disability. And, and a little bit of background on that, um, we passed a presumptive disability 2012. Um, and that's got a list of cancers that are presumed if by the occupational, if you get them, then you know, you're covered by workman's comp, which was a huge one for us uh, back when, when we did it. You know, and, and we used our political action and our relationships uh, to get that done. And, and, and recently, uh, when, we, when we signed um, the amendment to, to that with PTSD, you were the co-sponsor, um, but not only were you the co-sponsor, you really kind of stepped up and really were the main sponsor, um, even though, you know, uh, Representative Armstrong was, you know, there a lot and she, you know, she, she was, she had something going on at the time. So you, it seemed like you were uh, very involved uh, in helping us, uh, whether it be a witness in all of the committee meetings, uh, being on the floor, advocating for it. Uh, you were a huge part of why we were able to get that legislation passed. So um, I like to, I like to tell our members about that. And that's kind of why we, partner up and and make the relationships with you know politicians yourself um you don't look like the prototypical politician representative sansbury so uh but she is and that's why we solidify those those kind of relationships and, and get stuff done in santa fe and, and, and all at all tables that we can but um please give our memberships a little insight on how kind of that bill happened uh what you how you were involved um, how it goes through committee, how it gets to the floor, how it gets voted, and eventually to the to the governor's desk to get signed. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, let me just check. Can you guys hear me okay? Because you froze up a little bit in the middle. Yeah. So we I want to make sure. You. Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, you know, I, I right after you froze, I heard you mention Representative Armstrong, and I think really, I mean, the entire credit for this bill is owed to Representative Armstrong, our governor, and to you all, because you all are the ones who brought this legislation. And I know that our locals were very involved, you know, the unions across the state were involved and helped supported it. And it's part of a national movement that's been going on for several years to make sure that our firefighters and first responders can get access to care for PTSD. And, um, you know, it's, I think, as much, you know, a public policy issue is like just a fundamental healthcare issue, right? Is making sure that people who are putting themselves on the front line every day have access to care for themselves. Um, and so that they can take care of their own mental and emotional and spiritual well being as you're taking care of the community. So, um, gosh, I get, I actually get emotional even thinking about it. Um, so, you know, it's the way legislation moves sometimes is very nonlinear. You might introduce a bill one year, but it's hard to get any traction on it because of the political dynamics and things that are going on. But, you know, in 2018, there was a bunch of new people elected to the House, um, a couple of new people in this, oh, not to the Senate. Um, and then the governor was uh, elected that year. And obviously, a lot of us who were elected were huge proponents and supporters of um, the firefighters and you all supported us and, and us getting elected. But um, 2019 uh, session came along, um, Representative Armstrong helped to get the bill um, ready and introduced and she wasn't able to be in the legislature um, on a day to day because of some of the issues that she was dealing with. And so um, as partnering on the bill, I helped to kind of carry it through the committee process and be present for the hearings like, um, like you were mentioning. And, you know, I think one of the things that was coolest about working on this bill for me was all of the folks who came in to testify on the bill and to stand up and tell their own stories. And that's the thing that I think is most powerful in legislating and in the political process is I always say you have to inform the mind, but you have to touch the heart. And that's really what makes things happen. Right. And so, um, you know, I really honor and salute the bravery um, not just obviously as firefighters, you're brave, right? We know that you run into into dangerous buildings all the time, but the bravery to come in front of legislators and the media 
and tell the stories of your own struggles and the way in which, you know, PTSD has impacted your life. I think that is one of the ultimate um, signs of bravery is to be able, be able to tell your story in that way. And, you know, we um, had committee hearings in both the House and the Senate and multiple hearings. And I think having um, people stand up and tell their stories really, really impacted the legislators as they heard these stories. Um, and then the bill went to a House floor vote. And because I was a freshman legislator, one sort of unusual thing that happened along the way is that um, freshman legislators get asked to sing a song when they introduced their first bill. And so after we had a fairly heart-wrenching opening to introducing the bill on the House floor, I was asked to sing my first freshman song. So I sang um, Friends in Low Places, like one does. <laughs> and then we voted on the bill and it passed in the House. And we went over to the Senate and we got it passed in the Senate um, the last week of the legislature. And, um, and fortunately, Representative Armstrong was able to be there. And then we had um, a signing ceremony up at the training center up on the west side. And um, it, was, it was a really moving um, signing ceremony, I thought. You know, we had people from all over the city came. And um, I know the National um, Union um, folks came out. And it was, you know, it's something that you guys put years of work into and hopefully will help for years and generations of people getting care and help um, as you guys are doing your work out there. Yeah, I, you, you hit on a whole bunch of important points there. And I just wanted to reify to our membership because, you know, probably the majority of us don't get involved in the political um, world of of why our, you know, our local does what it does. Um, so one of the things that we're trying to do is just educate our membership on, on, on that important aspect, whether they want to get involved or not. And I was guilty of it for the first, you know, nine years of my career where, you know, I was like, oh, those guys are going to take care of it. And before I got involved and after I found out what it really was and how important it was um, to 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 partner and have great relationships with with politicians like yourself, because, you know, though it took years and years of work, we couldn't have gotten it done without the partnerships and the relationships of endorsing um, outstanding candidates like yourself. Um, for very important positions, you know, and, and your advocacy and, and how you represented us and how you spoke about us in those committees and on the floor, um, you know, that's that's nothing light to be said about, you know, Representative Stansbury. So we, we really appreciated your your advocacy for that bill um, and Representative Armstrong, because you're right, she she was the uh, the, the sponsor of that bill and she deserves a lot of the, the credit. Um, but we we also loved and thank you for everything that you did during that session. Um, and you know, back to the the point of why 244 gets involved in politics. This is why this is going to be a bill that's going to affect our membership for years and years to come. And, and though it took some work and some uh, on the ground to to do it, you know, the partnerships that were held between our executive staff, our local and and uh, representatives and senators and the governor um, at, at all levels of politics is, is why we were able to get that done. So uh, that's kind of the reason we're, we're doing this outreach to our members and, and trying to educate why we get involved. So, um, and on that note, you, you had some big news recently, right? You want to tell us about that? I did, yeah. Well, so um, as probably everyone's heard on the news, our amazing Congresswoman from CD1, Deb Holland, has been nominated as the Interior Secretary. And so she will go up for the confirmation process this spring. And you all have supported Deb in her campaigns. And she's a huge advocate for our first responders and also for unions in general. Um, but she, when she's confirmed, her seat will be vacated. And so I've thrown my name into the hat. And um, so once Deb is confirmed, I'm hoping to run for her seat. And uh, we announced uh, a couple of days after Deb's uh, announcement that she was to be nominated. So it's exciting. It's a, another wild adventure here in Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah, but it's so, it's, you know, I, oh, go ahead. That's, I was going to say that's very courageous of you, and I think uh, um, you know I barely understand the process of of how someone gets um, put on a ballot, and I, you know just to make it simple for our members, it's not it doesn't go to a primary where um, the it's consist constituencies vote on a candidate. It goes to central committee members. Um, so that tells a little bit about that process and how you plan to get on on the ballot. 
Yeah, well, this is a very unusual election, even by national standards for a special election. So um, it's kind of the general process is that um, once a seat is vacated, a congressional seat is vacated, then the Secretary of State calls for a special election. And then it's up to each party to each major party to nominate who they want to represent them on the ballot. So there's kind of a uh, inside game within the party. And then after the parties nominate their candidate, then there's a very short general election that's about 90 some days. And so you have to simultaneously be um, working to get the nomination within the party while you're also preparing for a major general congressional election that's probably going to have national attention because it'll be the first um, big election um, once the new administration takes office and because Deb has become such an amazing, you know, known figure around the world even. So I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on Albuquerque. So, you know, the internal process is just a lot of conversations with people. The people, you know, it's funny to like read in the paper and see on the news, people are like, it's an inside party game. Well, the people who serve on the committee inside the party are just regular people. They're people like you guys who raised your hand during a you know, union meeting and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help out this year. So a lot of the state central committee members who will vote on who the nominee is um, for the party are people who raise their hand during ward meetings. And so, um, so that part of the campaign is, you know, just talking to people, hearing them out, finding out what they care about. Um, and of course, lots of grassroots organizing, which you guys are masters at and, um, really and helping to share. Time. I was just going to say this year was really weird for us because we were unable to campaign for the candidates that we support like we usually do. You know, usually 244 is on the ground and, and knocking doors and campaigning. And this year was yep. just really weird. And we, we're looking forward to getting back to, to how we can help do that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. And actually, you know, I that's one of the things that I think is so cool about um, what 244 does. You guys like not only put your money where your mouth is when you support candidates, you go out and put out signs, you go knock doors, you show up. Um, and uh, it's like it really makes a difference. I think a lot of people don't realize like I'm, I'm a newbie to politics. I just got into politics in the 2018 cycle and you know, just like when you're out there responding to an emergency, that human connection with you make with somebody is part of kind of the whole process of, you know, caring for them and then, you know, dealing with the situation. Well, politics is no different. Politics is about making a human connection with people and, you know, seeing them and connecting with them and listening to them and then, you know, helping to identify how you can best represent their interests in, in in the political space. So I actually think in some ways it's kind of a similar job. So it, it makes sense that you guys are awesome community organizers and political organizers. Cool. Well, that's exciting. Uh, uh, Representative Stansbury, it's really exciting. And um, we're looking forward to how that election shapes up as well. Um, we're towards the end of our, our, the attention span of our members. We're right around, you know, 20 minutes or something. So. <laughs> Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to talk about before we adjourn? No, you know, I just obviously I want to just say thank you to everyone for the work that you do for serving the community for, you know, I mean, truly everything that you do to your families and also to wish everyone a happy holidays. And just to know that myself and all, you know, we have amazing legislators um, in Albuquerque. There's over 30 of us that serve the Albuquerque area. And I think all of us are very accessible. If you ever need anything or, you know, obviously right now during the pandemic, the Capitol shut down, but, you know, um, get involved, um, reach out. We're here any way we can help. And um, yeah, just really appreciate, appreciate you all. And thank you for having me on. Okay. Thank you, Rep Representative Stansberry. We're looking forward to talk to you more soon. And thank you for your time today and, and, and good luck on your, on your campaign. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Take See care. you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We're still on live with, with us. Uh, I think. A little uh, recap uh, for you guys that are still listening. We're, we are going to have our election on 
January the 13th, 7 to 7 a.m., 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Union Hall, Station 33, County, Station 40, County, City Station 17, City Station 9. Uh, we will have COVID safe practices as much as we can. That'll include uh, bring your own pens if you can. We will have a clean and dirty pen drop. We are not going to allow any more than uh, three people voting at the same time, so no, no congregating in, in groups at the polling sites or at the election sites. Um, please wear your mask, social distance as best you can, and we will have uh, uh, we will have people disinfecting surfaces at least once an hour throughout the day. If you have any questions about our election coming up, um, please give me a call, and we can sort all of that out. All right, thank you very good. Thank you guys for your time. We'll talk.